Hi, here's a uh, video tutorial for a reinforced concrete beam to EC2. Uh, there's quite a lot of basic information which I have to present to you before I can explain how we calculate the main reinforcement for this beam. So I'll, uh, I'll see if I can zip through this quite quickly. Uh, we have a pair of slabs, 5 meter spans, on each side of a central beam. The beam itself spans 7 meters. The beam is a downstand beam. Uh, 690 mil deep by 350 mil wide. The slab is 290 mil thick. And if I cut a section through the whole slab, uh, both of the slabs on each side of the beam, it would show that I have three beams in total supporting the slabs, and each of these beams is supported on a column. So here's the span of the, um, the slabs. What else have we got? We've got some um, concrete, which is 32 newton strength some steel which is 500 newton strength, cover generally which is 45 millimeters, We've got some typical uh, load factors for dead and live. Dead load just comprises the slab and the beam self weight, the variable action or the live load I've taken as 5 kilonewtons meter squared throughout the slabs. The main bars are 32 mil diameter and the shear links are 12 mil diameter. Great. Well, the first thing we want to do is carry out the uh, uh, calculation for the loading of the slab. We're going to consider the live load over a 5 meter strip of slab, which in turn loads the beam, and we'll consider the dead load over a similar area. Here we go. So the live load, uh, we have variable action of 5 kilonewtons meter squared, acting over a load width of 5 meters, which is made up of 5 over 2 plus 5 over 2. And if we consider just a 1 meter length of slab, a 1 meter length of beam, then the variable action amounts to 25 kilonewtons per meter, which is 5 kilonewtons meter squared times a 5 meter load width. Great. Permanent action is pretty similar. We're going to calculate the cross-sectional area of the slab, which loads the beam, and a little bit of the beam itself which, uh, which is loaded, uh, which has its own self weight. Uh, right, so the slab is 5 metres times 0.29, because it's 290 mil thick, by the density of concrete, which is 25 kilonewtons meter cubed. So the slab uh, weighs 36.25 kilonewtons meter. The beam itself, we know, is 690 mil deep, because we calculated that. Uh, we were given that right at the start, therefore the downstand section of the beam is 400 mil deep and we know uh, before that the beam is 350 mil wide. Great. So the self weight of that small portion of the downstand part of the beam is 0.4 by 0.35 by 25 kilonewtons meter cubed, gives us 3.5 kilonewtons a meter run. Add the two lots of dead load together and it gives us a total of 39.75 kilonewtons per meter. Now we have to factor up variable and permanent actions. The variable action factor is 1.5, so we multiply by 1.5. The permanent action factor is 1.35, so we multiply that by 1.35 to give us a total value of 91.2 kilonewtons per meter run. That 91.2 kilonewtons meter run acts on the 7 meter long beam and from this we can now calculate uh, the bending moment in the beam. The bending moment for that UDL is W L squared over 8 and W is this. So W 91.2 times L squared 7 squared, all divided by 8, that gives me a value of 558.6 kilonewton meters. So the bending moment at mid span of this beam is 558.6, Next, what I want to do is just check the ultimate uh, moment capacity of the beam. So, what can this beam carry 
uh, without making use of compression reinforcement. So it's just having tension reinforcement in the bottom and in the compression zone it's going to make use of just the concrete. And I have a little equation that helps me uh, calculate that and that's MU equals 0.168 FCK BD squared. Right. I know 0.168 FCK B. I don't know D. Now what is D? D is the effective depth. And that's the distance from the top of the face of the concrete that's in compression to the centre of the um, of the reinforcement that's in tension. So it's this distance here. Let's make sure that this is D. Now, can I work out D? And I think the overall depth of the beam is 690, so D is going to be 690, then I'm going to have to take away some distances. 45mm for the cover, 12mm for the links, and half of the main bars to get to the centre of the main bars. When I cal calculate this, I get D as 617mm. That's great. I can make use of that in my, well actually I make use of this figure of D uh, throughout the rest of the um, my calculation. So I'm going to note this here because it's such an important value. Great. So MU, I'm now going to calculate MU, so it's 0.168 times FCK, what well, we said at the start, at the start. 32 newton concrete times b to 350 wide beam times d squared well we worked out d 617 all squared now that's going to give me an answer in newtons and millimeters however i want my answer in kilonewton meters so i'm going to divide it by 10 to the power 6 just to make the conversion for the units that gives me an answer of 716.3 kilonewton meters so is my ultimate moment capacity greater than my applied moment? Yeah, it is. That's good. That tells me I don't need compression reinforcement uh, to make this beam work and to carry the applied uh, loads. Right, next thing I want to do is I want to calculate the lever arm between the uh, compressive stress block in the concrete and the centre of the reinforcement where the tensile forces occur. So at the centre of the reinforcement, we have a tensile force, and at the top of the concrete, which is in compression, we have a compressive force. Now I'm assuming, for this, for the sake of this example, I'm ignoring the uh, the slab on each side of the con uh, concrete beam. Now in reality this slab would make this beam a lot stronger, it would give it a much more uh, compressive uh, concrete to make use of and the lever arm would be increased and its, hold, its strength would increase. But just for the sake of this example I'm just ignoring the slab on each side and I'm just considering the compressive stress block to lie within this rectangle that's 690 by 350. Uh, normally you wouldn't do this in design but hey this is a tutorial. So the compressive stress block here is approximately like this. Being a, so we end up with compressive force here, FC, and the lever arm, Z, is the distance between FC and FT. It's a difficult, it's a difficult distance to uh, ascertain in reinforced concrete design because it varies according to the, uh, the forces within the concrete section. So uh, we're going to take a two-stage approach to working this out. And the first stage is to calculate a factor of K. And K is M over BD squared FCK. Then we're going to make use of this in a graph provided by the I struct D. So the bending moment is 558.6 times 10 to the power 6 because I'm going to convert this kilonewton meters into newton millimeters uh, because all along the bottom of this equation I'm going to be working in millimeters, millimeters squared, and newtons per millimeter squared. Okay, B 
d squared f c k. If we calculate that out, it comes to 0 0.131. 0 0.131. So this is where I make use of uh, figure 5.5 from the iStroke D manual for the design of concrete buildings to Eurocode 2. This is a great little table because it's, um, it's it just shows a different way of carrying out calculations. You can do this by spreadsheet, you can do it by simply using an equation by computer, but hey, let's make use of a table. So on the bottom I have my k values. I have a line here, which is from part of the graph, which allows me to relate k values to an axis, which is for z over d. So let's do that. We have a k value of 0 0.131. Let's just double check that. The k value is 0 0.131. Yep. So if I run my pencil straight up to the graph from k equals 0 0.131, hit the uh, line on the graph, and then run it across leftwards, that gets me a value of z over d of 0.87. Fabulous. Let's carry on with my calcs. So I'm saying that z over d equals 0.87. Well, that tells me that z, which is what I'm after, is 0.87 times d. And we know d. Uh, we worked it out, so that's great. Now we know what Z is, we can calculate the area of steel for the section. Because the bending moment applied to the uh, beam is, is exactly the same as the couple between the compressive forces in the concrete and the tensile forces in the steel. So FT times Z equals the bending moment M from the applied loads. Uh, if we rearrange the, um, that formula, we get to a simple formula that tells us what the area of steel required is, and that's AS equals M over point eight seven FYKZ. Uh, bending moment, 558.6 times 10 to the 6. Once again, I'm going to convert my kilonewton meters into newton millimeters, because that's the way the equation works through most simply. 0.87 FYK, we said at the start that the strength of the steel was 500 newtons, and Z is 0.87 times D, and D, we said, is 617. Right, let's work that through, and that comes to 2393 millimetres squared. So I need to provide in my beam 2393 millimetres squared of steel in the bottom. Now I've already decided I'm going to use H32 bars, so I need to either put 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, I don't know how many, in the bottom of my um, beam. So let's see how many I need. And I'm going to just use a sectional, sectional areas table. Uh, so here are the bar sizes. Here's the number of bars. So if I had one 32 mil diameter bar, it would give me 804 millimeters squared. So that's you know, pi d squared, pi times 32 squared over 4. If I've got two bars, it would be 1608. Three bars would give me 2413. Bingo. That's what I'm going to take. Three bars give me 2,413 millimetres squared. So I'm going to be sticking a third bar in here. And just for completeness sake, at the end of my calcs, I'm going to say use 3H32, which give me 2,413 millimetres squared of steel. And that is the end of the calculation for the main reinforcement in the beam. We also need to check uh, shear, maximum amount of steel, minimum amount of steel, deflection, uh, but we'll leave that for another time. Thanks for watching.